Am I wrong for not trying to convince my parents to treat all their grandchildren equally? I, 47 male, got divorced from my first wife when I was 29. We had two kids and my folks loved them more than anything. But my ex-wife wasn't happy with the lifestyle that I could provide. I wasn't making a lot of money, but we weren't in debt or anything. We had good cars and we had just put a down payment on our first home that we would own. Meanwhile, her boss was rich, he was 47 and he could provide luxuries that were out of my reach, and she left me for him. I still had to pay child support, but I guess I was lucky that I didn't pay spousal support. I had to work and I couldn't get custody. I got visitation, but my ex made it hard. The kids were young, and she manipulated them. If I had planned to take them to a local resort for our summer vacation, she would take them to Disneyland the week before. So, I would always come up short. Eventually the kids refused to spend time with me. It went to court, and I basically had to accept that I couldn't force them to see me and my parents. I met my second wife, 33, at the dog park when I was 37 and she was 24. She had a son who was about the age my son was, the last time my parents got to see him. My parents accepted him right away. He loves them, and my wife is like a daughter to them. It is what I always wanted for a life. We have two more kids now and my stepson is about to graduate next year. So a few years ago, my dad sold his company. He is an engineer and he had some patents that ended up being worth a fair bit of money. He paid off my house. He also made educational funds for my three kids. He figured the older ones were done school and hadn't bothered to visit them in years so they didn't need anything from him. Turns out that was wrong. My ex-wife married a scam artist. He was rich, but he wasn't rich enough for the lifestyle she wanted, so he stole from his clients. And then he went to jail. My oldest kids are in a lot of debt while my ex is living with her parents. She recently tried to tell me that my parents needed to be fair with all their grandchildren. I told her it was their money to spend on the people they loved and who loved them back. She said that we were punishing her kids for her mistakes. I said that both of our kids were adults and hadn't made any effort to see me nor my parents in over a decade. She said I'm being a bad person for not convincing my parents to help her kids. Now for the top comments. Not wrong. It's not your money. And your ex and the kids made their choices. This is like getting angry at a will. It's not supposed to be fair. Not wrong, and I love it when karma hits. I am a big fan of karma too. But here, OPS children were manipulated by their mom. Still, they could visit at last their bio dad once they are old enough to understand. We are not hearing the both sides of the story here, so not sure what made them so bitter about their dad. Not wrong. Don't fall into your ex's trap again. I understand kids being manipulated, but at the same time, your parents didn't have much choice with either of them visiting or even greeting on special occasions. I would want my near and dear to enjoy my fruits of my labor rather than some distant family member. As much as it isn't the kid's fault for being manipulated, it is on them to work at overcoming it. They need to recognize what their mom did and ultimately what it did to them. They still need to work to make amends. And for the right reasons, not just to alleviate their debt. I grew up being manipulated as well as being the victim of manipulation. I understand the struggle of having to take responsibility for something I didn't create. But I also understand how hard it is to convince those who have been manipulated against you to see it that way and you have to put up a guard to protect yourself. It's a sucky situation, but it's not unresolvable. Not wrong, she made her bed and she must lie on it. Kids are adults now, they could have made an effort to know you and your family, they didn't. She's only reaching out because money bags was money rags, and she realizes what she could have had in hoping to still cash in. It has nothing to do with you and your family, but about how she can cash in. Next story. Am I wrong for not supporting my ex? Ex broke up with a decade ago, three months before our child was born. Said I wasn't fit to be a father due to an opioid addiction. I'd been in a wreck that caused severe spinal damage and pain, and formed a habit that I'll admit took me a lot longer to kick than I'm proud of. She was never in any way supportive on that particular subject, but her leaving me over it was out of the blue. Court said custody would be 50-50, and it has been since. In that decade, I've done okay, remarried a wonderful woman who I've had two girls with, and was promoted into a position with a seven-figure salary. Meanwhile my ex has not done well, she's remarried twice and was broken up with both times. Filed bankruptcy, lives in what I can only describe as a crap hole apartment. I make sure my son is well taken care of, my wife, girls and I spend every moment we're legally entitled to spend with him and we offer to include him in quite literally everything, which his mother frequently declines when it's on her time. My son and ex both know as well that if he needs anything he can call and ask. I've sent food, clothing and so on frequently and several times put them both up in a hotel because their apartment was being fumigated or something. 
But both my parents, my ex's parents, my sister, and of course my ex, feel I should be financially supporting my ex. Their reasoning is that, my son stays with her half the time, she's the mother of my son, and during those times he's with her. They're both living in squalor, and my son gets upset every time he has to go to his mother who he started saying he hates as of late. When she tells him she won't feed him because it's expensive and to call me because I have money, it's no small wonder. So far as I'm aware she can afford to feed him, she's working two jobs, but she'd rather I pay his expenses so she can afford expensive shoes, in addition to the minimum payment on her maxed out credit cards. I've tried to get sole custody, the courts made it clear that short of her murdering several people, that's not happening. I've held my ground thus far, as I feel I've no responsibility for her, and I've no desire to support her using my son against me for her own financial gain, which is exactly what she's doing. My wife says she sees both sides. So, am I wrong for not financially supporting my ex because it affects my son? Not wrong. She wants 50-50, then it is on her to take care of him for her 50. You are not responsible for her. I am sorry you were unable to get full custody. Is there any way to give your son a card he can use to buy food when at his mom's if she doesn't feed him? He's only 11, so no one will take a card from him. Right now, he'll text me or my wife and I'll Amazon overnight, DoorDash, or whatever he needs. We tried cash, but his mother would take it all. Not wrong, but if you're making over a million a year, you must be smart enough to figure out how to protect your son. Call CPS or similar, if it's truly squalor. Pay for a lawyer, do something besides complaining about it on Reddit. Act. I've tried. The court told me that if I tried again without proof of gross neglect, they'd consider me to be harassing her. It's been extremely frustrating, and I don't see that the courts are being at all reasonable. As I'd said, it seems nothing short of her murdering several people is going to make a difference. My attorneys tell me it's just how it is in this state. Your son needs to be telling his teachers that his mother is refusing to feed him and he has to text you or go hungry. They are obliged to report it. Also get some therapy happening for your son. This will also count in your favor. It would be incredibly dangerous for OP to tell his son to mention this to teachers because of the court's prior warning. They'd likely see it as parental alienation. Save proof of everything she says and does that is neglectful of your children. Text messages, emails, etc. where she is saying anything like that. Hire a good attorney and bring her back to court again. You can even report to your son's school if his mother is neglecting or mistreating him. They are obligated to report it. You clearly provide for your child and are a good parent. You can prove to the courts that she is unfit if you have sufficient documentation. You need to speak to an attorney. Reddit is not the place for this, but you are not wrong for not wanting to financially support her. It's only your job to financially support your kid. Next story. Am I wrong for telling my mom to shut the heck up about karma? My mom was cheated on by my dad, and the lady my dad cheated with got pregnant and my dad decided to leave my mom for her. Their kid is now 17 male, I'm gonna call him Luke. My mom does not like Luke or my dad, or Luke's mom. I'm not close to any of them either. I despise my stepmother, and I hated my dad for a long time too but our relationship has improved. I barely have a relationship with Luke but that's improving too. One thing my mom believes in is karma, or at least her definition of it. Ever since the day she found out my dad cheated, she's been telling me about how karma will get him and the other woman back disguised as Luke. Something happened to Luke a couple years ago, my mom called it karma. This was disgusting to me, because while I usually just let my mom say whatever because she's been through a lot, I draw the line at her calling my half-brother's trauma karma. Instead of just minding her own business, my mom told everyone and their moms about how this was karma getting them back. We had a massive fight about it and didn't talk for months, but she eventually apologized. I've been spending some time with Luke because my dad said he's been feeling a bit down since he broke up with his girlfriend, and I wanted to catch up. My mom doesn't like it but keeps her mouth shut. Anyways, I was staying the night at my mom's house for reasons, and was FaceTiming my husband in my room. I told him how Luke's actually a really fun kid to be around, and that I'm very glad he's been able to rise above everything that's happened to him. I then said, he's been through a lot. The second I said that, I heard a sound outside my door, hung up then found my mom listening. I asked her what the heck she was doing, and she immediately said, you shouldn't care this much. Hate to say it, but this is just karma at work. I doubt this is the last struggle he'll have to deal with. Karma's unforgiving like that. I was honestly mostly really disappointed. I ended up yelling though, and told her to shut up about her stupid freaking karma and move on. It's been 17 years, and she sounds insane. My mom was all like, how could you say that? You know what I've had to deal with. Are you betraying me too? I just rolled my eyes at her and walked into my room. 
She began to yell at me through the door saying I broke her heart and how I'm being incredibly cruel etc. She didn't talk to me the next morning and looked as if she cried all night. My older sister says that I should apologize and that I should be kinder, but I don't know. Am I wrong here? Edit. I'm a 30-year-old female. My dad and mom are both the same age and 50+. plus. My dad married his affair partner who is also 50+, plus and had my brother who is 17 years old. Now for the top comments. Not wrong. If anything, wouldn't the karma be against your dad and stepmom who cheated? What did Luke do other than be born? I'm sure you're sorry for your mother and it's your dad's fault for cheating, but maybe you should urge her to get therapy or something. I asked my mom the same question and she said that Luke is their karma. I don't really get it, but apparently she believes that when a person cheats and has an affair child, then that child will be very difficult for the parents as karma for cheating or something like that. Luke was in as a bit of a troublemaker, so she likes to call that karma as well. Lol, if I recommend therapy, I think she will actually lose it. My older sister tried, but my mom was firmly against it. Not wrong. The level of vitriol your mother has for your half-brother is alarming. He had nothing to do with your father's decision to cheat, and celebrating his misfortunes as karma is not acceptable. I think it's important to the story that OP isn't just being nice to dad's affair partner's unrelated kid, because he's been through a hard time. He is their flesh and blood sibling, regardless of how he was conceived. And yes, mom is harboring an irrational amount of vitriol for her child's sibling and being very callous to her own child in the process. If OP's mother keeps doing what she does, karma is probably coming for her too. Last story. Am I wrong for not giving my stepdaughter a trust fund? I, 39 female, come from a very wealthy family. I never had to struggle for anything because my mom or dad would always give it to me. I can say that I grew up spoiled, but I grew out of that phase once I had my twins. Since I was so spoiled and never got in trouble for anything as a teenager, I was always going to parties with my friends, doing drugs and drinking alcohol. Then at 16, I found I was pregnant and gave birth at 17 to my two beautiful twins, girl and boy. Thankfully my parents were supportive and helped me through the process. My parents had set up a trust fund for me when I was a kid, and I wasn't able to access until I was 18, so when I turned 18, I moved out and got a condo. I only used my trust fund whenever it was for my kids, rent, or essentials around the house. I also took some out and put it in an emergency fund. I got a job at my dad's company, so I was able to live comfortable but not keep up with the lifestyle I grew up with. When I was 31, I met my now husband and his daughter who was 4 years younger than my kids. Me and my husband dated for about 4 years, then we got married 2 months before my twins' birthday. On my twins' 18th birthday my parents gifted them each a trust fund of their own that summed up to $200,000 each. Now my twins are both 22 years old and both are thriving, I like to give myself a pat on the back for how I raised them and not how my parents raised me. Now to issue at hand. My stepdaughter is now 18 years old, and for the past couple of months, she been saying how she couldn't wait to get her trust fund like my twins, and I didn't know if she would or not, because I never knew about the twins. Now when her birthday came around, she did get money, just not the trust fund from my parents. Instead they gave her a car. But to say she disappointed is an understatement. She said we didn't love her because she wasn't blood, and that we've always treated her different because she wasn't my daughter. Which wasn't true, I've loved her from the day I met her, and I've always treated her like she was one of mine. She then asked me why didn't I tell her she wasn't getting a trust fund, since that was all she was talking about, and I told her I didn't know if she was getting one or not. She then told me that I should have made one for her myself. I tried to tell her that it wasn't possible, but she didn't want to listen to me and just said she hated me. So am I the a-hole? So you married her dad four years ago. And somehow, she felt that when she turned 18, she'd be entitled to a generous trust fund from your parents, is that correct? That's kinda crazy to be honest. But what's crazier is that, nobody, not you, not your husband, sat her down when she started to bring this up, and say it probably will not happen. Not wrong. It's a wild expectation for a 17-year-old to have, but one of her parents should have curtailed that expectation before it got out of control. My husband has told her multiple times to not be expecting the trust fund because she might not get it, and I also told her that I didn't know if she would get one or not, but she has chosen to ignore us. My husband did actually sit her down and told her that she shouldn't expect it but she just brushed him off. Well then, this was an enormously optimistic or entitled reach on her part. A little immature, but nothing that can't be fixed. Try and explain that opening a trust fund like this requires years of putting money in. You cannot just give someone a fund of this size after 4 years. Not wrong. 
Your stepdaughter has been part of the family for only four years. Why would she feel entitled to a trust fund from your parents? How has your husband handled her expectations? That's what I was thinking. If they set up a trust for OP when she was kid, they probably set up a trust for the twins after they were born and had 18 years to contribute and let interest accrue. If anything, maybe let the grandparents know she was talking about it and see if they were going to do the same for the stepdaughter, but I'm really not sure how I feel about that. It's the grandparents' money to do with as they please, not the stepmoms.